Brody Smith went to Twitter on a hot take spree, so naturally, I have to react. I'm Jefferson from the Disc Golf World on day 18 of Discmas with the weekend wrap-up, breaking down everything disc golf you missed from the weekend. Brody went to his favorite app to tweet, give me your best disc golf hot take right now, and the fans didn't disappoint. Caddy should be mandatory and required input information such as disc selection, distance, location, and result on each throw into an application. This way, commentators would have access to more information with which they could set the stage for each shot. Brody responds with, more info will certainly help. I don't think caddy should be mandatory, but I do see how they will be more utilized in 2024 with every player needing to keep score. Let's be real, no one's going to want to do that. So if you're attending any events next year, now's the chance to ask to be a caddy. In order to keep pace of play moving, cart should start on the first and ninth tees. Brody's been telling that to the DGPT as well. I like this idea from the player's point of view. It speeds up the play and the day overall. But for the spectators they're watching, you're limiting the experience. What was once an all-day activity now ending hours earlier ruins part of the vibe. Especially since the majority of disc golf events are in the middle of nowhere with nothing to do. I mean, have you tried to spend a week in Emporia before? Brody is of course going to have opinions that make his job easier, and I get that, but I got to be the voice of the fans in this one. The longer the day, the more it's worth the money from the spectators, and with the price of VIP, you're going to want to be soaking up as much of it as you can. Limit the amount of discs you carry on the Pro Tour. Brody then asks what's a good number, 20, 15, 10? I never understood the idea of limiting the amount of discs for pros. One of the most popular reasons people play disc golf is for the creativity, and how there are so many different ways to approach a single shot. Why take a crucial element out of our sport? And for what? Who does this even hurt? I don't know any more than a handful of professionals that carry more than 25 discs, and those people already get weird looks. Somebody goes on to say anyone that didn't vote for Kristen Tatar for Player of the Year shouldn't be allowed to vote anymore. Brody then responds, one year ban from voting I think is fair. I don't think a year ban from voting is necessary. At the end of the day, Tatar won by a landslide, so who cares? That's coming from the channel looking for the weekly clickbait. Ella Hansen, who's been targeted for someone who didn't vote for Kristen, was recently asked if she voted against Tatar in a recent interview with Johnny Disc Golf, and this is how she responded. Be honest, Ella. Were you one of those 15%? <laughs> oh, absolutely not. I seriously feel like you would have to be delusional to not vote for Kristen. <laughs> I mean, she won all four majors. Even if she won all four majors and nothing else, like, how could you not vote for her? I don't understand. Like, the debate between, like, Calvin and Isaac on the MPO side, like, that I kind of understood. But when you look at Kristen and, like, I just feel like you have to be delusional, like, in order to not vote for her. So if you are one of those people, I'm calling you out. <laughs> There you have it for those accusing Ella. Drop in the comments who you think didn't vote for Kristen Tatar, and then let's all move on. Calling throws strokes is incorrect according to both the rulebook and grammar. Brody responds, oh, I like this. What's the proper terminology for disc golf? Throws? I agree. I think we need to change some of our terminology to get away from ball golf, and stroke is a good first step. While we're at it, can we change the term tee pad? Where's the tee? I was introduced to it as a launching pad, so that's what I've been calling it since day one but I'm open to options. I don't mind just calling it throws like Brody suggests either. I mean, that is quite literally what it is, so makes sense. Another person goes on to say Calvin Heimberg will win more than one major next year. I'm gonna take the under on that one, but setting the line at 1.5 majors I think is great. We need the boys from hitting the line here to get the props back up. Brody then goes on to say, I like circles. First of all, launching pads. Second, Brody giving off hella these vibes. I like turtles. But I can't disagree. I also like circles. Someone with the hottest take so far claiming Brody's going to win a major next year. That's a dumb take for sure. Paige Pierce is set up to dominate Tatar next year. I would be lying if I said I wasn't rooting for a Paige Pierce comeback, only because disc golf gets super boring watching the same person just win tournaments with ease. Don't get me wrong, it was awesome to see the historic season from Tatar, but once is enough. Or at the very least, I hope Paige can keep it close to the end of tournaments. But I also have confidence that in 2024, the FPO field will be taking that to the next level. Holland Hanley played a consistent season and finally got the win off her back at the end, which I think will be able to propel herself to be even more competitive. Ella Hansen has been putting up numbers year after year. It's only a matter of time before she's battling for wins. And Missy Gannon with a big event at the end proves she can win when the best are playing. Another person says there should be a cut line, and Brody agrees, saying at every tournament. Again, 
From a competitive standpoint, I see why this makes sense. But as a product for disc golf, a cut would suck for spectators. If you've ever been to an event, you notice that yes, the lead cart is packed with fans. But certain players can attract a fan base due to their personality. Brody is one of those players along with Jeremy Colning, Paul Uliberry, and plenty of others. If you have a player with this big of a fan base not playing on the most poppin' day at the event for spectators, it again ruins part of the vibe in my opinion. I know personally every event I attend, I make sure to watch a bit of Austin Turner, Gavin Rathbun, and Connor O'Reilly no matter where they are. I think this is common among disc golf fans that would rather watch their favorite players than people in the lead, because it's usually super hard to see with how many people are packed in the woods. Disc golf fans just want to watch disc golf, no matter who's playing. The most fun events I went to had holes that people would just sit on all day long to watch every player come through. If you take that away on the last day, it takes away from the whole experience. Just talk to the members of the eight holes, the flock, or the hive, and they'll be sure to let you know. Another bold take. MPO needs to break away and form their own tour. They're carrying the FPO, and it's hurting the growth of the MPO that has four times the field size. Brody Quote tweeted this saying, this is such an interesting topic because I have no idea what the right answer is. I'm not going to claim to know the right answer either, but I do know it's stupid to say the FPO is hurting disc golf. Kind of lame to not call that out. And if you're not going to defend your peers, why the f*** quote tweet it? I'm not going to pop up the old foundation tweet, but the vibes are mad familiar for those who know. They need to change how it's filmed. Watching discs fly is more exciting and engaging than golf balls, yet most of the time discs are lost in trees or the shot is seen from an angle that doesn't. Brody says, I've been saying this for a while. Stop cutting to catch cam mid-flight. I want to see the whole flight of the disc. I think the number one reason I hear why people play disc golf is how the disc flies. So I completely agree. We need to show more of the flight instead of cutting away. But I wanted to ask one of the best catch cams in the game about his opinion. Bobby went on to say, For the most part, I agree. I like to cut it right before it hits the ground to see the skip up close and to get a better perspective how close it is to the basket. But yeah, I want to see most of the flight from the T-cam. Buying your newborn kid a PDGA number is weird. Brody goes on to say that might start a riot, but nah, that shit weird as hell. Sorry. Another fan goes on to say Ricky will never win a major again. His major drought is not talked about enough in my opinion. Brody with the hard disagree, and he thinks that Ricky will get one in the next three years. It doesn't sound like the hottest take to say Ricky will win a major, but the last time he won one was in 2017. If he can stay healthy, I wouldn't be surprised. But if I knew a breakdown of everything I need to know about Waisaki's 2023 season, I would probably be able to make a better decision. I know a majority of people will disagree, but as a casual that doesn't pay for streaming or follow the tour, low scores are bad for the reputation of the difficulty. And Brody thinks this is a great topic that people have very different opinions on. Personally, I never understood the hatred of shooting 40 down. I think it's only a problem for people who understand the scoring from golf. If we just had a counter that tallied each individual throw and we kept score that way, I genuinely don't think people would complain about scoring. Again, I think this is another example of how disc golf can separate from ball golf. Drew made a tweet about disc golfers not caring about his golf videos and not understanding why. Brody's main critics come from people against making disc golf more like ball golf. Maybe, just maybe, we should be creative and instead of just trying to follow a sport that more people don't give a shit about, come up with our own ideas. I'm not saying we gotta stop saying birdie or bogey, but why do we have to try and copy their OB rules or try to take anything else? Paul McBeth's 2024 revenge year for everyone thinking he's not a top player anymore. Paul was interviewed on the upshot where he talked about not getting surgeries for his torn labrum with hopes of making the first event of the year at his new course. I'm just hoping he doesn't hurt himself any further. I would hate a McBethless 2024. Shout out Brody for the hot takes. It clutched up with a slow weekend of disc golf. Make sure to drop your hottest disc golf take in the comment section below. And while you're down there, smack that subscribe button. If you want to hear all the stories from the disc golf world taking on the preserved championship, make sure to check out the video right here.